Hello everyone, how are you? Welcome to the very first ever episode of Mike on the Mic. Obviously, this is Mike. Basically, I want to start doing a sort of blog, vlog, video blog thing. Uh, I've been influenced by the Mighty Jingles, which is my one of my very favourite YouTube channels. Uh, as a guy, he calls himself Jingles, I don't know what his real name is, but he's a retired Royal Navy personnel who does videos on military based gameplay games like World of Tanks and World of Warships etc. Lots of different games but those are the two ones he focuses mainly on um, and it's the brilliant stuff I mean if you've not seen Jingles go and have a look My, the mighty Jingles he does unlike everybody else who just does gameplay he also does things like the past history of the boat in real life what it did in World War 1 and World War 2 etc. It's like a little mini documentary before you even get to the gameplay and you learn a lot from him it's dead interesting but anyway, he does a, a video once a week called Mingles with Jingles. And it is basically like a, a blog thing, vlog, whatever you want to call it, where he just chats about himself. What, what, what was he going to say? He chats about himself. That's not quite true. He chats about what's going on with him, what's he been up to, any plans coming up, etc, etc. And it's it makes for good viewing. It really does. And he has a visual backdrop of World of the Tanks or World of Warships, and then he just talks, like a little radio show. Well, obviously the backdrop here is RC, since it's an RC channel. But I really wanted to have a, have a go at doing this sort of thing, because it's dead interesting. And uh, I hope to do this, but, you know, it obviously, if it's not well received, I'll happily drop it. But give it a chance, is all I'm saying, because I quite like the idea of doing it. Today, the backdrop is the Basher Pitbull in that little forest near where I live. Uh, not the most ideal car for the, you know, the conditions, but eef, whatever. So, what's been going on with me? Well... I've not had the best of luck uh, the, the last week or so, if I'm honest with you. Two things have been dominating my mind at the moment. Car and money. I'll start with money first. I just quit my job. Um, just to give you a background, I am a scientist and I work with marine mammal conservation offshore. But all of the contracts, well most of the contracts, almost all, say 99.9% .9 come from the oil and gas industry. And when the oil and gas industry collapsed, I had to find a new job. So I've been working as a, a sort of you know, get you by type job, a dead end job, uh, as an investigator for a sheriff officer, which was horrible. Now, uh, that's not the reason I left, but it certainly has nothing to do with it. Uh, you know, it mostly involved knocking on people's doors, going, Oi, uh, they're looking for your council tax, you need to pay up your council tax. You can imagine it was a bit, what's the word? That wasn't nice. Anyway, let's put it this way. There was lots of uh, confrontation. Because, you know, knocking someone's door, demanding money. You know, it's terrible. And to be honest, I like to think of myself as too nice a person to do that sort of job. Because a lot of these people were just falling a hard time. Can't afford the council tax. Uh, anyway, that's I'll, I'll quit that because I've had uh, note, or I've had notice, rather, that the offshore industry is picking up again. So I hope to get back offshore again. Which would be great. Because I'm so rookied for money. I mean... Uh, the car's away, I'll get onto the car. Uh, my Agas ran out of fuel, so I have no heating, no hot water, no cooking. Just got a little electric hob, but that's it. Um, and I can't afford Aga fuel, because the car's in, in the MOT station. And then it's, it, obviously you don't know how much it's going to cost until it's all diagnosed. And at this point on the video, I found a, a lawnmower lying around the, in the bushes in the forest. Random. So, yeah. I don't know what's going on with the car. Uh, all I know is I only got 11 days worth of wages coming in on minimum wage, so it's not exactly great, is it? Talking about the car, it is a 29-year-old Mercedes 190E. Now I love my old Mercs, especially my 190s. I've had a few of them, uh, but I haven't been kind to it, if I'm honest. I haven't been maintaining it. I've just been driving it and driving it and driving it. It's my daily driver, and it's now come to the point where it's got a, a grumbly head gasket. It's not gone, but it's not great either um, and it's got leaky front shocks and it's got brake uh, the brake pipes need done the brake front brake discs and pads need done the tires need done and there's some more stuff as well but it's all basically money stacking up so I'm really reliant on if I do get to go back offshore again but one of the one of the the, the good news well, sort of one of my hopefully my saving grace will be I did get re-rendered in my work van back in November by some woman who wasn't looking. And hopefully the whole whiplash thing comes through and I get a little bit of money for that. I'm not looking for a lot, but it would help me out. It certainly would help me out. 
get some heating and some cooking and some hot water and get my car on the road again. That'd be great. Thank you very much. So there was that, yeah. Another thing was, uh, who, who's uh, familiar with Robot Wars? It's one of my all-time favourite TV programmes, basically. Armoured radio-controlled vehicles with hammers and axes and flippers and stuff. It's brilliant fun. Well, we went, me and Rachel, we, well, I drove to her house, it takes about an hour, and I stayed over at her house overnight. And we left from her house, from Stirling, where she lives, to Glasgow, which is where Robo Wars, and picked up my friend Callum, who also lives in Glasgow. Uh, so we left her house at half past six in the morning, roughly, just before that, I think. And me, Callum, and Rachel, we arrived. And we got turned away, because everybody was queuing up, because they'd overbooked. So yeah, all the way to Glasgow and no robot wars. Although we did go to the Riverside Museum, which was much better than just, you know, going home again. I quite enjoyed it. I like museums. Um, there was a good few exhibits on cars and bikes and ships and things. And there's also a, an old-fashioned sailing vessel. Well, I say sailing vessel. It has masts and things, but it also has an engine. Uh, turn of the century, sort of 19th century. Steamer, I think. And uh, do you see how close it was on the video there, how close the pit bull was to the dog poo, look. And again, watch the dog poo, ooh, watch the dog poo. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't mean that. And then, obviously, this magnetised or something, because I go straight through it again. Well, magnetised is one thing, but, you know, the car's made of plastic. So it can't be that, but anyway, I, I started doing <laughs> burnouts and donuts around about here to try and get all the dog poo off the tyres. So, yeah, not been great. Uh, but I must say, there's one thing that bugs me about museums, and see, I don't know if you, you guys, um, it, it first struck me in the Scottish uh, Royal Museum, I think it's what it's called, Royal Museum, which is the massive one in Edinburgh, the biggest and best one in the country. But it's not as good as it used to be, I'll get on to why not. But the, all the exhibits are very, almost dumbed down. Have you noticed that in museums? And it's almost like the information is kept to a minimum to keep kids entertained. And I always felt that, you know, you should have the little little bits of information. Yes, okay, fair enough. But there should, all, should also be next to every single exhibit, every single item, a little f electronic thing or whatever to allow you to delve deeper so you can learn more. Because, you know, it, in this day and age, we're, oh, look, good thing GoPro's are tough. Eh? In this day and age, it, we can get information. We're in the information age, and by the way, look at that road here. Seen this? middle distance. Road deer standing the road there. She uh, legged it into the right hand side after she saw me. But um, yeah, in this day and age with the internet rules the world essentially, we can get vast amounts of information at our fingertips. Museums need to try harder as far as I'm concerned. So yeah, I think, you know, give, give, it, give it some more in-depth information as well next to it. That's what I would do. Anyway, the reason I don't think it's as good as it used to, the, the good, good as it used to be, the old uh, Edinburgh Museum, is it was brilliant if you went into the Great Hall part, which is two storeys, although the top story is sort of just platforms around the outside of the room, so it was hollow in the middle, if that makes sense. So you got the bot the ground floor, and then the first floor was just basically platforms. Um, the, the fl hanging from the roof was an entire full blue whale skeleton. It was fantastic. 35 metres long or something, or 36 metres long, I think it was. Enormous. But uh, they don't have that anymore. And they've, they've sort of got all these plastic models hanging from the roof now of giant squid and fish and all the rest of it. But then you try and get the information on it, it just says giant squid. You know, number 14, giant squid. Number 18, yellowfin tuna. You're like, well, there wasn't even any more information. Not, you know, not even things like, just the scientific names for people. I just think, yeah, museums need to get more information. If you want it, you can delve deeper. But yeah, a little rant about museums there. Anyone, anyone reading? Anyone reader? I've been reading, uh, C.S. Forrester, the ship, about a fictional British light cruiser during World War Two, which is what I just started last night, actually, when I couldn't sleep. Um, and the guy was actually, the, uh, the author, C.S. Forrester, was actually on a light cruiser during the war to get research for the book. So, I'm hoping it'll be good. We'll wait and see. But yeah, that was just my first ever look at it. I hope you enjoyed it, and if it's well received, we'll continue doing this. Thanks for watching. Take care. See you later.